The loss of his son was too much for King Leoric. I did what I could to ease his madness, but in the end it overcame him. A black curse has hung over this kingdom from that day forward. But perhaps if you were to free his spirit from his earthly prison, the curse would be lifted. My goodness, demons running about the village at night, pillaging our homes, is nothing sacred. I hope that Ogden and Garda are all right. I suppose that they would come to see me if they were hurt. I was shocked when I heard of what the townspeople were planning to do that night. I thought that of all people, Lazarus would have had more sense than that. He was an archbishop and always seemed to care so much for the townsfolk of Tristram. So many were injured, I could not save them all. Ruf and Aeneas are missing. Light protect us. Is there no place that is safe? Our only hope of returning to a peaceful life rests in you. Please, you must find those boys and bring them home to their family. This sounds like a very dangerous place. If you venture there, please take great care. Horizon was insane. There are forces with which one does not interfere. It would not surprise me if you found only the charred remains of this damned fool. Farnham is often confused, but he speaks a powerful name when the word Iswal passes his lips. Cain would be able to tell you in much greater detail the legend of this warrior. By the light I know of this vile demon. There were many that bore the scars of his wrath upon their bodies when the few survivors of the charge led by Lazarus crawled from the cathedral. I don't know what he used to slice open his victims, but it could not have been of this world. It left wounds festering with disease, and even I found them almost impossible to treat. Beware if you plan to battle this fiend. I suppose it isn't beyond the realm of possibility if you could bear being in that room again. Your description of the atrocities committed there would be enough to keep me far from it. This does seem familiar somehow. I seem to recall reading something very much like that poem while researching the history of demonic afflictions. It spoke of a place of great evil that... Wait, you're not going there, are you? A golden elixir, you say? I have never concocted a potion of that color before, so I can't tell you how it would affect you if you were to try to drink it. As your healer, I strongly advise that should you find such an elixir, do as Lockdonan asks, and do not try to use it. If you had been looking for information on the pestle of curing or the silver chalice of purification, I could have assisted you, my friend. However, in this matter, you would be better served to speak to either Griswold or Cain. Hmm... It sounds like something I should remember, but I've been so busy learning new cures and creating better elixirs that I must have forgotten. Sorry, for once I can vouch for Farnham's extraordinary claim. There are many mentions in the books that I've been reading about a place of great healing where warriors of light would go to mend the wounds sustained in the Sin War. If you could find this place, it would most assuredly be to the benefit of us all. I was asked to assist in the exorcism. My skills were able to ease the poor man's suffering as Tremaine drove the demon from his body. While I was treating him for an exceptionally high fever, he spoke of a place of searing heat. The tortured fellow cried out about hell and falling into a pit of flame. I could not make any sense of it, and thankfully he soon recovered. Cain would be able to tell you much more about something like this than I would ever wish to know. I really don't have time to discuss some map you are looking for. I have many sick people that require my help, and yours as well. I don't know what it is they thought they could see with that rock, but I will say this. If rocks are falling from the sky, you would better be careful. I can't make much of the writing on this map, but perhaps Adria or Cain could help you decipher what this refers to. I can see that it is a map of the stars in our sky, but any more than that is beyond my talents. I'm glad I caught up to you in time. Our wells have become brackish and stagnant, and some of the townspeople have become ill drinking from them. Our reserves of fresh water are quickly running dry. I believe that there is a passage that leads to the springs that serve our town. Please find what has caused this calamity, or we all will surely perish. Please, you must hurry. Every hour that passes brings us closer to having no water to drink. We cannot survive for long without your help. What's that you say? 
The mere presence of the demons has caused the water to become tainted? Oh, truly a great evil lurks beneath our town. But your perseverance and courage gives us hope. Please, take this ring. Perhaps it will aid you in the destruction of such vile creatures. Good hero, a moment of your time, please. While attending one of the townsfolk who had taken quite ill, I noticed something odd about his home. There were strange sounds and a sickly sweet smell rising from the cellar. Thinking perhaps these fumes had something to do with his sickness, I investigated. In his cellar were monstrous worms shifting and squirming up from the underground. I beg of you, slay these creatures before they can make their way into the town. I left the door to his house open for you. It is the one opposite of mine. I fear that the worms could soon overrun the village. I know that they are coming up from under the house that is opposite mine. Just the thought of those slimy beasts oozing into my house makes me want to be ill. Please, rid us of them. Once again you have saved this humble town from the encroaching evil. We are, as always, forever in your debt. The witch told me that you were searching for the brain of a demon to assist me in creating my elixir. It should be of great value to the many who were injured by those foul beasts. If I can just unlock the secrets, I suspect that its alchemy holds. If you can remove the brain of a demon when you kill it, I would be grateful if you could bring it to me. Excellent! This is just what I had in mind. I was able to finish the elixir without this, but it can't hurt to have this to study. Would you please carry this to the witch? I believe that she is expecting it. My friend, I must speak with you. While going to help a sick villager, I came upon a demon in the town. I fled from the house and accidentally left the door open in my haste. I pray that the vile creature is still in there. Please, help us before it comes for us all. These creatures must be banished from our town. To my shame, I left the door open, but that should make it all the easier for you to find the house. Once again, the town is in your debt. It is only your strength and force of will that can lead us out of this evil time. Once again, I require your strong arm and quick wits to aid the people of this town. I am in need of certain reagents to help fight the plagues that the demons have unleashed on the land by their very presence. If you could gather these few items, it will save many lives. The diseases spread quickly and many are dying. Please, help me by finding the reagents so that I can use them to make an antidote. Thank you so much. You bring hope and light to these dark and troubled times. I wish for you to have this in the hopes that it will aid you in your battle against the darkness. I know that I ask much of you, but I must now ask that you find a pool of clear water. Take these containers, fill them, and return them to me as soon as you can. With the clear water, I can create an elixir of wondrous power that will benefit us all. Have you brought what I need? The clear water will allow me to create a very powerful elixir. Fill the containers that I gave you and return with them. Very good, my friend. Very good. Just give me a minute to mix these ingredients. Perfect. Here is some of the elixir as promised. What ails you, my friend? I have made a very interesting discovery. Unlike us, the creatures in the labyrinth can heal themselves without the aid of potions or magic. If you hurt one of the monsters, make sure it is dead or it very well may regenerate itself. Before it was taken over by, well, whatever looks below, the cathedral was a place of great learning. There are many books to be found there. If you find any, you should read them all, for some may hold secrets to the workings of the labyrinth. Griswold knows as much about the art of war as I do about the art of healing. He is a shrewd merchant, but his work is second to none. Oh, I suppose that may be because he's the only blacksmith left here. Cain is a true friend and a wise sage. He maintains a vast library and has an innate ability to discern the true nature of many things. If you ever have any questions, he is the person to go to. Even my skills have been unable to fully heal Farnham. Oh, I have been able to mend his body, but his mind and spirit... 
are beyond anything I can do. While I use some limited forms of magic to create the potions and elixirs I store here, Adria is a true sorceress. She never seems to sleep, and she always has access to many mystic tomes and artifacts. I believe her hut may be much more than the hovel it appears to be, but I can never seem to get inside the place. His Holiness is a wondrous man of great knowledge and understanding. He has shown me many cures for rare and deadly diseases. He brings me books and reagents for my work whenever he can, but I fear that he may some day take on some task that is too great even for him. Poor Wirt. I did all that was possible for the child, but I know he despises that wooden peg that I was forced to attach to his leg. His wounds were hideous. No one, and especially such a young child, should have to suffer the way he did. I really don't understand why Ogden stays here in Tristram. He suffers from a slight nervous condition, but he is an intelligent and industrious man who would do very well wherever he went. I suppose it may be the fear of the many murders that happen in the surrounding countryside, or perhaps the wishes of his wife that keep him and his family where they are. Ogden's barmaid is a sweet girl. Her grandmother is quite ill and suffers from delusions. She claims that they are visions, but I have no proof of that one way or the other.